now a retelling of the anime Kakagurui. Subscribe to the channel to get 1,000 subscribers. Enjoy the show. Hayakao Private Academy stands as one of Japan's most prestigious institutions, a place where admission is reserved exclusively for the elite. This school operates under an entirely unique system, one ruled by the student council, and its hierarchy is governed by an ominous world of gambling. In this unusual domain, the most adept gamblers bask in popularity, wealth, and authority, while those who fall into debt are relegated to the status of pets, forced to serve the whims of their fellow students. Into this highly competitive and treacherous environment steps Yumiko Jabami, an enigmatic second-year transfer student with an aura of mystery. She is introduced to the school by Ryota Suzu once a regular student who, after losing a gamble to Mary Satone, the top gambler in their class, has become a pet. Mary promptly challenges Yumiko to a game of modified rock-paper-scissors, Jenkinpon. While Yumiko initially loses, she boldly proposes a final bet, involving a staggering 10 million yen in cash. It is during this high-stakes showdown that Yumiko reveals how Mary had manipulated the votes of their classmates, allowing her to predict Yumiko's moves. Yumiko skillfully exposes Mary's underhanded tactics, effectively turning the tables and securing victory in the game. As a result, Mary finds herself plunged into debt. In a surprising gesture, Yumiko shares a portion of her winnings with Ryota, expressing her gratitude for adding excitement to the game and extending the hand of friendship to him. This encounter marks the beginning of Yumiko's journey within the cutthroat world of Hayakao Private Academy, where gambling prowess and strategy are the keys to survival and success. After her defeat at the hands of Yumiko, Mary is relegated to the status of a pet within the school's hierarchical system. Her loss serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of failure in the world of gambling at Hayakao Private Academy. Soon, Yumiko is confronted with a new challenge, this time from Atsuki Sumareji, a first-year student council member known for her impeccable card-playing record and the daughter of Japan's foremost toy company CEO. Atsuki proposes a high-stakes game of double concentration, utilizing two decks of cards created by her father's company. In this intense match, Atsuki manages to secure a 20 million yen victory over Yumiko, although the game remains incredibly close. Despite Yumiko's financial constraints following her loss, Itsuki accepts her opponent's request for a rematch, but under a chilling condition, if Yumiko loses again, she must surrender her fingernails and toenails to be added to Itsuki's extensive collection. Itsuki employs a cheating strategy involving heat-activated patterns in the cards, convinced that her deceptive tactics will ensure another win. However, Yumiko reveals her sharp intellect and astute observation skills by discerning Itsuki's scheme. She goes on to demonstrate her exceptional memory by memorizing the cards, ultimately securing victory in the game. Yumiko acknowledges that Itsuki would indeed have emerged victorious had she employed a new deck, showcasing her exceptional ability to adapt and outsmart her opponents in the high-stakes world of gambling at Hayakao Private Academy. In the midst of her journey through the world of high-stakes gambling at Hayakao Private Academy, Yumiko finds finds herself invited to the traditional culture research society's clubroom. It's a fateful moment as she arrives just in time to witness Mary's devastating loss in a high-stakes bet, further increasing her already substantial debt by an additional 40 million yen. Yuriko Nishinitoin, Mary's opponent and a member of the student council, as well as the president of the culture club, then extends a daring challenge to Yumiko, the life or death game. The first round of this intense contest ends in a draw but Yumiko quickly discerns that Yuriko has been cheating throughout the game. Yuriko's deceptive tactics involve having the dealer wear magnets on her hand to manipulate the movement of the swords used in the game. As Yuriko becomes increasingly anxious over the possibility of losing over 2 billion yen, the situation takes a dramatic turn when members of the student council, including the enigmatic council president Kirari Mamabami, make their presence known and decide to observe the game. Ultimately, Yuriko secures a victory in the match, leading Yumiko to suspect that the student council may have employed an elaborate cheating scheme in their favor. By venturing to a room below and using magnets to manipulate the outcome, Yumiko is left with a staggering debt of 310 million yen. Thus being classified as a pet and joining the ranks of those who must serve the student body, Yumiko and Mary find themselves ensnared in the labyrinthine web of the student council's control as they are presented with life schedules, documents that dictate their entire futures. These schedules encompass every aspect of their lives, from the careers they will pursue to the individuals they will marry, even specifying the number of children they will have if they fail to clear their debts. The ominous weight of these schedules hangs over them, compelling them to take drastic measures to regain control of their destinies. In response to the growing population of pets, those ensnared by crippling debts, the student council introduces a debt exchange game. In this intriguing contest, groups of four students engage in a game of two-card Indian poker with the aim of swapping their debts. The victorious participant not only eliminates their own debt but also stands a chance to accumulate wealth. Yumiko and Mary, with their intertwined fates, end up in the same group, joined by Jun Kiwatari, a rebellious male student, and another pet named Nanami Tsubomi. Although Jun is not burdened by debts to the same extent, he enters the game with a relatively modest 10 million yen debt, 
harboring ambitions of using the game to turn a profit. As the game unfolds, June appears to deduce that Yumiko and Mary are collaborating, only to find himself ensnared in a complex and deceptive play orchestrated by Mary. As the debt exchange game intensifies, the pressure mounts on June, who finds himself in a precarious situation. Yumiko and Mary, sharp as ever, begin to suspect that June is manipulating Nanami to cheat on his behalf. With the game evolving into a high-stakes battle of bluffs, June becomes increasingly desperate, knowing that failure could result in a substantial debt. As the game progresses, June manages to make some headway, but his desperation reaches a breaking point when Nanami has the opportunity to surpass him. In an attempt to maintain his lead, June resorts to coercion, trying to force Nanami into folding. However, Yumiko steps in, using her persuasive skills to encourage Nanami to stand up for herself and break free from June's control. In a surprising twist, the game's final results reveal that Mary has claimed the top spot, while June finds himself at the bottom of the rankings. It is then disclosed that Yumiko and Mary had orchestrated a clever switch of debts between themselves, leaving Yumiko's debt as the least valuable. Consequently, June is saddled with Yumiko's colossal debt of 310 million yen, while Yumiko acquires Mary's 50 million yen debt, effectively clearing Mary's debt altogether. Nanami, despite her unchanged debt, emerges from the ordeal with newfound self-esteem and a sense of liberation. In the high-stakes and treacherous world of Hayakao Private Academy, Yumiko's enigmatic behavior raises questions within the student council. Despite having ample resources to clear her debt, she refrains from doing so, leading the council to suspect that she may be harboring a desire to challenge Kirari the council's formidable president, to a match. Amidst this tense atmosphere, Midari Akishima, a deranged member of the student council, proposes a chilling game to Yumiko. This twisted contest involves a guessing game, where the victor of each round gains the right to point one of two revolvers at the loser, pulling the trigger without knowing which of the gun's six chambers holds a deadly bullet. The stakes are exceptionally high, with the possibility of life and death hanging in the balance. Yumiko, undeterred by the ominous nature of the game, agrees to participate but lays out strict conditions. The game must consist of only three rounds, Ryota must serve as the dealer, and the loser must pay a staggering sum of 1 billion yen. Midari adds an intriguing twist, stipulating that if the winner intentionally misses her shot, the loser has the right to return fire. As the game begins, Minari fully loads her revolver and manages to outscore Yumiko in the first round. Yumiko issues a warning, advising Minari against pulling the trigger, but the deranged council member remains undeterred by the ominous consequences. The tension escalates as the deadly game unfolds, testing the limits of nerves, strategy, and risk within the shadowy corridors of the academy. Midari doesn't hesitate to shoot, but the gun is Yumiko's and it is unloaded. Midari reveals that gambling with money makes her feel nothing, she poked her own left eye out as payment for losing against the council president and realized she only likes gambling when the risk is pain or death. In the second round, Yumiko correctly matches every card as Ryota simply uses her card order from round one. In the final round, Midari puts Ryota under pressure by reversing the screen and giving him 10 seconds, he deals the cards in the same order again. Having figured out the cheating, Ryota is right-handed, but was somehow dealing with his left, Yumiko loads two bullets. As Midari wants to be shot, she aims to get no matches, knowing that with a full match, Yumiko has to pull the trigger five times, guaranteeing at least one shot, but Yumiko ruins her plan by getting no matches too, resulting in a draw. Yumiko finds playing with no risk boring and despises Midari for it. Defeated, Midari begs Yumiko to shoot her, but she refuses. Meanwhile, Mary refuses to join the council and swears revenge on Kirari. In the wake of Kirari's departure from Hayako Private Academy, the student council is left in a state of uncertainty, grappling with how to address the enigmatic presence of Yumiko. This power vacuum allows the second-year students Kid Minuta and Yamemi Yumamite to seize the opportunity and bolster their own authority within the school. Meanwhile, Itsuki Sumareji, who faces the imminent threat of being disowned by her father following her loss to Yumiko, approaches Yumiko with a proposition. Itsuki offers her unwavering loyalty if Yumiko can defeat Kirari ascend to the presidency and secure Itsuki's reinstatement to the student council. Amidst these shifting dynamics, a challenge letter arrives from Yumemi Yumamite, the head of PR and a Japanese idol sensation on YouTube. Yumemi issues a high-stakes wager, betting Yumiko 50 million yen on the outcome of an onstage idol championship competition. The terms of the bet are dire, should Yumiko lose, she will be forced into an idol duo with Yumemi, leading to the forfeiture of her social life and meaningful relationships, a fate reminiscent of Yumemi's own existence. However, Yumiko employs her cunning and strategic prowess, 
tricking Yumemi into making candid admissions on a recording device. These revelations expose Yumemi's true thoughts about her fans, labeling them as disgusting pigs. Yumiko seizes this evidence and incorporates it into the bet's conditions. If Yumemi loses the competition, Yumiko will release the incriminating tape, thereby dismantling Yumemi's career as an idol and crushing her dreams of becoming a Hollywood actress. The high-stakes gamble between Yumiko and Yumemi reaches its climax during an in-school concert organized by Keith Minuta, showcasing Yumemi's idol talents. The competition includes a series of games tailored to assess idol skills, such as dancing and singing. Yumemi strategically allows Yumiko to secure victories in several games, creating an illusion that her chances of losing are genuine. However, the pivotal moment arrives with the final game, which requires the participants to guess the birth month of audience members. This game is critical because should Yumiko lose, she would forfeit the entire gamble. Yumemi, who has memorized the birthdays of her entire fan club, exudes confidence in her ability to secure victory. The tension escalates when Yumiko manipulates the outcome by tampering with the dice, resulting in Mary's selection as the audience member whose birthday must be guessed. Yumemi panics, realizing that Mary's birthday falls in March, and her confident facade begins to crumble. Yumiko employs clever tactics, tricking Yumemi into writing 9 on her card when Yumemi had initially chosen 6. However, Mary's birthday is revealed to be in March, not September, and Yumiko emerges victorious by virtue of her guess being 3 months closer to the actual date. Despite Yumiko's subsequent revelation of Yumemi's derogatory remarks about her fans, the idol's devoted supporters remain loyal to her. Yumiko admires Yumemi's unwavering dedication and conviction. She then exposes that someone had attempted to undermine Yumemi Yumemi's career by sending her a torn-up fan letter along with the challenge match. Yumemi publicly accuses Keed, the most plausible candidate for orchestrating the sabotage. As Keed vehemently denies any wrongdoing and asserts his intentions to become the next student council president, Yumiko suggests a gamble to determine the truth. She declares it an official match, leaving Keed with no option to refuse. As the unfolding drama at Hayakao Private Academy continues, Kirari participates in a meeting with the leaders of her extensive family, all of whom belong to the influential Mamabami clan. This family gathering hints at the complex web of power and intrigue that surrounds the academy and its ruling student council. On the stage, Keith finds himself growing increasingly convinced that Yumiko is merely a gambling addict who derives pleasure from the thrill of wagering. This perception drives him to challenge her further, leading to a high-stakes match that could potentially expose hidden facets of Yumiko's character. Ririka, the enigmatic masked vice president, proposes a variant of poker in which specific rules dictate the course of the game. In this modified version, players are prohibited from folding or calling, ensuring that each round will have a definitive winner. Moreover, the last player to raise holds the power to determine whether a stronger or weaker hand prevails. Each participant is allowed to discard and replace any number of cards once before placing bets. With her 310 million yen converted into 31 poker chips, Yumiko enters the game while Keed purchases a staggering 100 chips for 1 billion yen. The initial round sees Yumiko clinching victory, prompting Keed to consider her passion for risk-taking as a factor in her gameplay strategy. He employs his formidable calculations and intellectual prowess to secure wins in subsequent rounds. Facing the prospect of rebuying chips, Yumiko reaches out to Itsuki, who is in the audience, for financial support. Despite Keed's insults and an offer to return her student council seat, Yumiko steadfastly defends Itsuki as her friend. She encourages Itsuki to embrace risk-taking for the sake of her aspirations, rather than accepting the seat from Keed as the safer option. Fueled by determination, Itsuki steps forward and purchases 100 chips on Yumiko's behalf, setting the stage for a thrilling and suspenseful continuation of their high-stakes gamble. The intense gambling showdown at Hayakao Private Academy continues to unfold with Kirari making a shocking announcement to the dismay of other family heads. As the stakes escalate, Yumiko and Keith engage in a relentless betting war, with Yumiko eventually depleting her chip reserves. Undeterred, they both continue to purchase more chips, pushing the limits of their wagers. In a daring move, Yumiko proposes a bet of life itself, suggesting that Itsuki wager her life schedule. Initially hesitant, Itsuki ultimately accepts the bet after inspecting Yumiko's cards and, in an act of extreme commitment, forcibly removes her own fingernails. Ririka, who initially declared Itsuki's life schedule to be worth 10 billion based on her family's wealth, stands by the decision despite Keed's objections. However, a twist occurs when Ririka unveils her true identity by removing her mask, revealing that she is Kirari's identical twin sister. With Yumiko's total bet now amounting to 12 billion, Keed is forced into a desperate move, wagering his own life schedule for 10 billion and choosing the strong option. Unbeknownst to him, Yumiko masterminded a plot to deceive Keed into selecting strong. She 
reveals her hand of three jacks, trumping Keed's three eights. Keed's loss leaves him billions in debt and results in his removal from the student council. The complex web of motives and attractions between Yumiko and Kirari comes to the forefront as they finally prepare to face each other in a high-stakes gambling match, setting the stage for an electrifying climax to their rivalry. In the climactic match between Yumiko and Kirari, council member Rune Yamazuki presides as the judge, and the stakes are expulsion for the loser. Kirari selects the tarot cards of fate game as the battleground. The game begins with Yumiko drawing a card and earning one point. Kirari then selects a card worth 21 points, but keeps it facing away from Yumiko, setting the challenge. Yumiko must accumulate 20 points, or have Ryota locate the fool card, which could potentially lead to a win. Amidst the tension, Sumerajai and Mary believe they have identified the fool card, marked with a lipstick smudge. Yumiko, however, asserts that she alone should bear the risk of expulsion. Still, Ryota, driven by his loyalty to Yumiko, decides to share her fate. As Ryota is on the verge of choosing the marked card, he has a last-minute change of heart, suspecting it may be a trap set by Kirari. Ultimately, he selects a card at random, adding an extra layer of thrill to the game. The chosen card turns out to be worth 20 points, matching Kirari's score. With both players tied, Runa declares the match a draw and no one faces expulsion. However, both Yumiko and Kirari acknowledge that their gambling rivalry is far from over and they agree to engage in future battles. In a closing dialogue, Ryota reflects on how Yumiko has left a profound impact on everyone she has gambled with. Kirari decides to dissolve the student council, and Yumiko continues her journey as a compulsive gambler, ensuring that the thrilling world of high-stakes gambling remains an integral part of her life. Thank you for watching and write in the comments on what anime to make the next retelling.